What's up guys, Heeking here, bringing you this week's manga chapter review on the latest oh, One Piece. So, before I do start, I am obviously going to go through the previous last week's chapter, because I didn't do the review for that. I think I'm going to try and do this maybe every two weeks now, so I'm doing two reviews instead of one. This way I let things get a bit ahead, and my videos can be a bit longer as well. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's read, let's read. Uh, I haven't read the new One Piece chapter yet, so usually I read ahead and then I go through it, but in this okay, case, so I want it to be a bit of a surprise. This camera is constantly shutting down. It's pissing me off. Uh, yeah, I think it's decided. I definitely need to get a new camera. Um, but what? That's the... That's the that's the decision, isn't it? What I wonder if it's uh, to do with the the uh, attachment to it. Maybe yeah, it can't be that. It should be working fine, to be honest. Like the constant cutting off and that is just off putting. I mean, one minute it records uh, perfectly, and the next minute it cuts off constantly. Like what is going on? And that would be Loki. What's up? Yeah, don't care. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Buddy? No key? Okay. He's just doing that to piss me off. <laughs> Cats. Cats. Cats are cute and annoying. Um, Alright, so let's go through this because we got a lot of chapters to get through. Alright, so chapter, I believe I did uh, 1055 last time, so this is 1056 that we're going to be doing. I'm going to be going through this very, very quickly because I've already read this chapter, so yeah. And but guys, before I start, of course, remember to like and subscribe, and yeah, let's do this. So, the world's continuation. So we got this uh, little panel stuff regarding Utah, Utah you know, uh, Shanks' adopted daughter, which is a tie-in to Film Red. Don't really care, we're going to move on. I'm gonna skip that because it's honestly not that important. We did see, we did see his door in silhouette. Actually, I think in one of the other in, in the previous or the previous chapter before that, maybe. So, uh, uh, yeah. So she is somewhat in canon. Then uh, her character itself is probably canon, but the events obviously not. But yeah, as we're moving on, uh, we get the uh, chapter title, which is Cross Guild, which is a very important chapter that explains why, technically speaking, Bucky is actually. Uh, an emperor now, but yeah, the cover page we we get category, we get category, and we get Oven attacking uh, Germa, and uh, yeah, category and Oven spring into action. So yeah, who's gonna save them? Uh, we we'll have to wait and see for that. But yeah, we cut to the flower capital. You know, the aftermath of Rokikun's assault. Um, you know, don't die, Shino Shinobu. If you guys remember, Shinobu and Raizo were both getting their lives sucked out by Green Ball. Uh, all the other surviving um, retainers or samurai are there treating them, along with the nurses and the doctor. Uh, we cut from uh, Kinemon to, I believe, his wife. So we see his wife. O o Okaboka Town itself was reduced to ashes, and Asura suffered a nasty burn to the face, but I'm just thankful that she managed to survive. So this is a flashback, actually. We find out about his wife, we find out about his town and what happened. Oh, if it isn't, uh, otsuru -san, I hear Kinsan finally came home, yes, but he had to return to the capital. You hail from the capital yourself, any plans to move back? Yes, I always want to be by his side. So at least we get a happy ending there with Kinemon there. But now, even after 20 years, Toso is as gorgeous as ever. So yeah, it, it, it's crazy to think, because this guy got thrown thrown into, right? He got thrown into into the into the part, into the future. And 20 years later, he's, his wife is still looking... Hot, which is crazy to think because he's still the same age from when he left, right? Um, why is his wife has aged like 20 years? So it's a bit crazy to think about that actually. But uh, yeah, enough already. Even Puppy Love isn't this happy. He's like, uh, uh, dog dude laughing, and Ki Kiku is it, you know, smiling at that. Uh, and Rizo's like, I wish I were popular. You, Gara, just focus on your recovery, Rizo. And then we got Carrot there. Uh, oh yeah, we find out in this chapter that Carrot is the one being made the new ruler of Zhao, which is like what? So both both uh, Duke, both uh, both uh, Dog Duke and Cat Viper make her the new ruler. So it's like, boy, you know, uh, Yugara will be the next ruler of uh, Mokumo Kingdoms. Like R me, ruler? Sure, no biggie. And it's like, wait, ruler? It's like she can't believe it. We can't believe it. Uh, you'd think you'd think you'd think someone more appropriate would would be given the title. 
But, um, you know, the, the, the two of them do explain the cat and I have decided to stay in Wano to serve as Kozuki retainers and protect Momonosuke Sama. You, Gara, have grown very dependable after your adventures with Luffy and the others. You've definitely got what it takes to lead to the next generation. And yeah, I, I get the sentiment there. It's like, you know, we're old and it's time to pass the torch to the younger generation. And to be fair, Carrot has proved herself. She is a powerful character in her own right. I mean, when the mood comes out and she goes into a little uh, extreme ultimate form, if you will, she is a powerful character. She's young, yes, but that's why. The, you know, she's got the uh, the three musketeers, she's got Wanda. They are there, basically, to help her. They're, they're going to be serving as her advisors. As Wanda says, I'll be by your side uh, too, Carrot. The Duke's chose wisely. Pedro's will lives on more in you than it does in anyone else. And yeah, you have to keep that in mind as well. She was there with Pedro. He mentored her in those final moments of his life. And yeah, it, I guess it does make sense. Yeah, we leave Zao to you, Gara Young says. And we get a look of uh, Zushina walking through the ocean. We then cut to, um, you know, the the grandpa, uh, you know, Oda's father. And where he pretty much reveals himself to Momonosuke and the others. And everyone finds out that, yeah, this this dude is, is, is Momonosuke and ha Hayari's granddad. And all the other samurai, at least from what we see, Kamawatsu, uh, Kiku, I think, and Donchiru, they, they're all aware that this dude was was him. Except for Kinemon, he had no freaking idea, like, he was Sakiyama Summer all along, my lord, what a shock, still I am glad he is well. Like, he's got this, like, utter expert look of, like, shock and horror, like, he, he doesn't believe it. But, yeah. So, we get that moment, um, and then, of course, we cut to... We cut to the big revelation, uh, which I think is one of the most important things about this chapter. I think we did find out last week as well, maybe, but... Uh, oh, we did. We did find out last week. What am I saying? But yeah, it's basically the Straw Hat crew convening and Robin pretty much telling them all, yo, Pluto is in this country. So yeah, we get this big conversation like, what? Pluto's in this country? Yes, I didn't get the chance to see it myself, but there's no mistake in it, so it really exists. Um, Frankie would, Frankie of all people would know what Pluto looks like. He had the blueprints for it that the, uh, you know, Cypher Pool was trying to get, that the world government tried to get from him, from Tom, and uh, from what, you know, what's his name? His stepbrother. So the, he's fully aware of what Pluto's design is. Uh, a lot of theories going around that maybe he used some of those designs for the Sunny, but uh, I, I doubt it. We know that Pluto is meant to be this massive warship, right? Uh, I've got my own theories on what that is, and uh, I, I don't know. It's more to do with the One Piece, technically speaking. We still don't know what the One Piece is, but uh, imagine if it was a Metal Gear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Imagine if it is like a, a giant mecha zord or something, right? Or like Pluto, Uranus, whatever, uh, all have to come together and like uh, with Poseidon, like, you know, as, as like the operating uh, person. It's like giant arm or whatever, maybe. I don't know. Like, I I imagine if that's what it was. Like, it all just combines and I like, and it's just this big, massive mecha, like, or maybe it's just a giant ass world mobile. Um, battleship maybe i don't know i don't know like uh the theories that we all have it's just insane right but like you know when you think about it one piece it all comes together the weapons come together and they form with the heart of what the one piece truly is and it becomes one piece <laughs> no but seriously can you imagine if it is a walking battle tank like damn and and, and the symbol and, and and the foreshadowing would have been there if you think about it and the foreshadowing would have been set up since freaking filler bark you know a lot of people are like what was the point of filler bark yeah and it's like the point of filler bark was to set up the fact that uh, all these weapons come together to form a giant mech you know when 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 uh when Usopp or, was it Usopp or Frankie when he's like docking system whatever that wasn't just there for the fun of it no that was foreshadowing that that's what the one piece is going to be when when uh, uh Mario was creating freaking horns and controlling it from the stomach that wasn't just there for the fun of it no that was foreshadowing that someone is going to be controlling the freaking one piece because it's a freaking mech it's a freaking man sword it's a mega sword like can you can you imagine if that was the case like i won't be surprised like oh like older like sometimes does throw in little tiny foreshadowing elements like that like imagine if that is the case like the whole point of thriller bark was to sort of get you set up or hyped for for the appearance or for like for the future appearance of a giant mech and that's what it actually is like that's what it all leads to like one piece is this giant freaking mech or it's a piece of a mech and all the other weapons have to come together to form it or like the one piece is the cooling system is like you press that it, it's like okay Pluto's gonna come out of water now oh you uh, Poseidon here's the call like she's gonna swim there or like freaking Uranus is gonna come down from the freaking sky and it's like uh, 
like freaking transformation. Can you imagine if that's what it was? I doubt it. I doubt it. But uh, I'm not gonna let this theory go. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start paying very close attention now when we get to this final saga and start seeing if that is that is a potential reality or not. But uh, that will be hilarious if it is. Like the whole the whole point the whole thing of One Piece like it leads up and it's a freaking bang. It's like oh, this is what it was. It's like I know it's like yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Can you can you imagine? Uh like <laughs> that would be insane. Uh but yeah, we, we go through the conversation of course. Even Luffy, like, you know, usually usually people like to say Luffy's an idiot. But he shows his smarts here where he pretty much says, Didn't you torch the blueprints for that thing, Frankie? Like Luffy remembers. He remembers like, yo, Frankie had the blueprints for Pluto, didn't you torch it? Like, yeah, Pluto, it's an ancient weapon named after a god. You want it, Luffy? And Luffy's like, nah, I'm good. I thought you'd say that still. I can't help but wonder why would Oda want to unleash it? And it's like, yeah, good question. We then get the big reveal of a uh, Shinobu who comes in and she's young again, which is which is crazy. It's like it's like Green Bull sucked all the oldness out of her, which makes me which makes me wonder what Rizo looks like now. Does he look better too? Like, <coughs> so we got Shinobu coming in. Come again? Did you say that mature ladies are alluring ancient weapons? <laughs> and Sanji just yeah, getting the hot eyes. And Frank is like, "Who the hell are you?" And and there's Otama with her, who's going to be her new apprentice. And it's like it's me, Shinobu. And it's like, whoa, that's some glow up from Sanji. Like, and then Big Bro, I'm gonna smash it to bits. Big Bro, I'm gonna be Shinobu's apprentice. Dang, think I can get strong enough to join your crew next time? You look adorable, Otama. And I'll be going in to hug her. And he's like, Nufi pretty much says, yeah, sure. If you keep her on your ninjutsu training, she's so she, 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 she. So, yeah, uh, to Otama hinted at being an next Straw Hat crew member if she can sort out her ninjutsu. Obviously, this is like obviously this means these characters will probably come back in the future for the Great War, and maybe we'll see these characters all powered up and pulling off some stunts. But uh, yeah, I doubt I doubt I doubt Otoma is gonna improve that much. Like she'll probably be a little help, but not not by far. Remember though, she has the devil through ability to turn enemies into good guys. So there's that. We also get a cover 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 or whatever his name is appearing finally after after missing for a lot of the. Uh, uh, arc really uh, and he overhears the fact that Pluto's in Wano and uh, we get this first Poseidon now this there's a certain someone who'd love to hear about this now this is an interesting character because uh, he did start off bad and when we got his cover story he was turning over a new leaf he was helping like uh, the granny if you guys remember and then he got captured and then sent to sent to well I think he ended up in, in, in the Wano prisons so who is he working for now? Who would love to? Who is the certain someone who'd love to hear about this? And I'm wondering maybe if this is connected to Vegapunk, perhaps. Like maybe Vegapunk is the one that would like to hear about this. It will be interesting to see who this who Car Carabold is, or if I'm sorry if I'm saying his name wrong is connected to. I'm very interested to see what that is. But anyway, as we go through this chapter, you know, we cut to a few days later. And uh, obviously people are happy, Momonosuke is doing his thing, you know, the Shogun now, everyone's happy, everyone's smiling, seeing him. And he goes to Zoro to, to train, only to find that Zoro, Luffy, and pretty much everyone else has left. So he starts calling everyone's name, you know, from Anami, Usopp, Sanji, Chopper, Robin, Frankie, Bone, uh, uh, Kichi, Jibe, Yamato even. And he's like, where is everyone? And Hayori, have you seen Luffy and the gang? And Hayori is the one who pretty much straight up tells him, like, yeah, they all left earlier, right? Everyone came to say farewell this morning. It's lonely without them. And uh, the little girl, Yasu's daughter, is there. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, even Kinnamon uh, just found out himself, like, that they left. And we cut to the port, we cut to Law, we cut to Kin, and we cut to Luffy, all of them there. And, and, and all, all three of them are pretty much deciding to set off on at the same time. And they've all got the log post, and uh, and it's pointing to three different locations, and they're all deciding to pick to pick one north. You know, Law decides to go northeast. Uh, Luffy and Kid both decide to go to the middle east, uh, but obviously uh, they, they, that doesn't work. They can't do that. So, uh, and uh, where is that? Law pretty much uh, he pretty much Law explains that northeast is the most direct route. As we can see from this map, you know, it goes, you know, straight to northeast for Mono. Whereas the others, they have to sort of turn. So, like, one of them has to go to the Middle East, and then the other one has to go to the Southeast. Um, through the car, you know, and that's between the car belts as well, as we see. And, yeah, we who decides to go who, I guess? Uh, but, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think who decides to go. I'm the Emperor. I should be the best at drawing. So, Luffy's like, I should be the dresser at drawing. No, I lost the draw. Sorry, guys. And, uh, uh, what is it? Um... Uh, 
what's he's, what's he's, um, what? It's so confusing, uh, it's so confusing who they're citing, but, yeah, we get the big reveal of this chapter, uh, at the end of, uh, the paper, we find, we, not only do we find out that Buggy is an emperor, but we also find out that he's now formed a mercenary group called Cross Guild, and we find out that both Crocodile and Mihawk are in his crew. Sir Crocodile, Dracula, Mihawk are part of Cross Guild. There's a poster literally with Buggy in the top, Crocodile and Mihawk on the side there, and it's like, what in the world? Crocodile and Hawkeye, they're working on the Buggy, and so I was like, I can't imagine Hawkeye doing that. And it's right, I, I, I wouldn't be able to imagine it either. I imagine all three of them are pretty much the heads, but, it's, it, it, but because Buggy has that large group that he had in the beginning, obviously, since he became a warlord, uh, they all, he's pretty much probably got the most connections and all of them have come over to him and they're obviously all working together. It's, I imagine it's very similar to what's happened with Kid, Law and Luffy when they teamed up and this is the similar case, but because of this power, because of the, of them now working under this one unit called Cross Guild, as we see, he's, it, it, it makes, as it says, it may, yeah, as, as Law says, then he's definitely a worthy new emperor, yeah. And Luffy, Luffy just giving a, a given, uh, given the smackdown, he's like, trust me, he's just a moron, what the heck happened? And he's right, like, look, Buggy keeps getting lucky. Like, forget the chop chop fruit, this dude has the lock lock fruit on his side, you know, like, uh, he keeps getting lucky, like, seriously, the dude goes from being a freaking warlord to being a freaking emperor now having all of these previous warlords working with him, like, uh, it's unheard of and it's insane, and it makes me wonder if there's any other members there as well, um, would this mean that they're enemies? I don't think they would be. Rivals, yes, but I don't think they would be enemies. I think at this point, even Crocodile would probably be teaming up with Luffy at the time, King was, but as we saw, he did somewhat redeem himself when he decided to save Luffy during uh, Marineford, and even Mi Mihawk, like, has no beef with Luffy, technically speaking, and, and what is on good terms with Shanks, and is, for the most part, Zora's mentor and rival at the same time, but it does feel like we're going in for some sort of con confrontation, if this is going to be a fight or not, I don't imagine. I think the theories that we're going to get some sort of debut back fight are accurate and that's what we're going to get between maybe the Straw Hat crew and Cross Guild. But yeah, we also learned that uh, uh, from Kid, whatever it was, it seems this Cross Guild of his is issuing bounties on Marines. So now the Marines are getting hunted down. Now those Navy dogs have to watch their backs too. The hunters have become the hunted. So a lot of big revelations here. And yeah, just 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 insanity, just insanity really. Sounds like the world really changed while we were in this isolated country. Everyone's down within about their roots, right? Once we leave Wano, it's every man for himself. I don't want to hear any excuses. So, um, where where's everyone going? Uh, no, Law is going northeast. I think Luffy's going southeast, and Kid is going middle east. I think that's what's going on. Uh, some sort of paper gets dropped, and. Uh, from Law, he gives them to Kid, and he's like, you know, Killer picks up, he's like, what the hell is this, Trafalgar, and, and Law pretty much confirms, it's a copy of the load polyglyph, you earned it too, it wouldn't be sporting to keep it from you, so Kaido did have one, so now, so now we discovered that Law and Kid now have uh, these maps to the polyglyphs, so at this point, yes, they are rivals, uh, it's like the one we forced that Big Mom commander to hand over. So we also get this revelation from Kid that they got one from Big Mom. So Kid and Killer now have two. One from Big Mom and one from Kaido. Luffy, Luffy and Law at this point all have three. Okay. One from, uh, from Zhao, from Big Mom. And uh, I, ima I imagine if Luffy obviously gave it to him and from Kaido. So those guys, those two crews are a step closer to, to find to get into Raftal. But now, of course, like, you know, kids like her, if we want to stay ahead in the scramble for the One Piece, we ought to get serious about that guy. And we, we don't know what guy they're talking about, but Kid does say, you want to go after the mar man marked by flames? But we've got no leads. Who is the man marked by flames? I don't know, but I've read some theories that maybe it's referring to, again, to Vegapunk, and that maybe Kid is related to Vegapunk, considering that Kid is like this big mechanic and we see from you know from from what older posted from the children from the child designs of these characters when kid was a child he seemed to be like playing around with mechanics and robotics and that so he's obviously had a, a fascination with that since he was a child and the only way i can see that happening is if he basically got that from someone in his family 
and it would make sense for that to be Vegapunk, for like maybe he Vegapunk because he's granddad and he installed that fascination into him as a child and kid decided to go out and become a pirate and, do, and that was like his thing, that was his main thing, he took that upon himself, that whole image of, you know, he's he's like a, he's the robotics or the punk dude, if you will, because he is, he is a punk technically speaking, so it would kind of fit that theme that he is related to Vegapunk, maybe. But, um, yeah, and, and not, not just that, a lot of the other crews uh, and characters are related to bigger people as well. I mean, Luffy is related to Grob and Dragon. Um, Law, for the most part, yeah, he, he wasn't technically related to anyone big that we know of, but he is a D, so that makes him someone important. So, surely Kid has some sort of big relation as well, right? It would be, it would be, I, you know, uh, unexpected if it is, but uh, it is a theory, that's what I'm saying, this is a theory, it's not confirmed. But it would be fascinating if it is true. And that's who he's talking about. He's got that relationship. Similar to Luffy, he's got this relationship with his grandpa who's in the Marines. And, you know, Kid in return has this relationship. Because there's always the symbolism between these three characters. You know, Law is a D, just like Luffy is a D. So what's, uh, what's the symbolism between uh, Kid and Luffy then? That they got famous grandpas, perhaps? That are in the Marines or working for the Marines, perhaps? Hmm. Anyway... You don't know, I guess we're a step ahead of you. So, yeah, they, these guys are going ahead, and we cut to the flower capital, where we find out that Yamato is still at Wano. She is on top of the uh, main building on the flower capital, and she says, yeah, I've made up my mind. I'm about to head over to Luffy and the gang. So we get this big confirmation from her that, yeah, she's going to set out to sell. It's finally time to live like, like Oda did, heroic and free. So, yeah. So before I uh, finish this chapter off though, I just want to quickly point out that there's been some theories as to what islands these guys are heading to. Now a lot of people are saying that Law is in fact heading to Elbath, and Kid is in fact heading to the uh, Pirate Kingdom, you know, where, where Blackbeard, where we saw Blackbeard last time, and that Luffy is in fact sailing. As I was saying, Luffy apparently is sailing to Spinks Island, uh, where Marco, I believe, resides. So are these theories true? I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but uh, the idea that maybe we're going to cut back and forth between the characters, uh, between at least these ones specifically, and see what they're up to, unless they're going to be cover pages, uh, would be interesting to see. But uh, for Luffy to go to Spinks Island, uh, I don't see the point of that unless uh, it's to maybe tie in Weevil, like he goes to Spinks Island to get Marco, and that's where we get, you know, the whole revelation of a Weevil is because Weevil is one of those characters that's just sort of, that was just randomly introduced and then disappeared from the face of the earth. Like, what is his importance? Is he really Blackbeard's son? No, I don't think so. Uh, so what what is the connection there? Like, what is the point of his character? Is there a twist Oda's going to try and pull with him? I don't know. I don't see the point unless he's supposed to be a setup for like a mini arc to get things going. To going to heading into the uh, final saga, perhaps, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where this is going to go. But we'll have to wait and see. Unless he's part of Cross Guild, perhaps. So I could see a lot of the surviving warlords teaming up with Buggy and making him more powerful as an emperor, so to speak. But again, have to wait and see, guys. Have to wait and see. Anyway, that's my review for 1055, and we're going to head over to 1056 now. Sorry, that was 1050. That was, I just did 1056. I'm doing 1057. I'm an idiot. <laughs> anyway, guys, remember to like and subscribe, and yeah, let's move on to the next uh, to the to the newest chapter, basically. If this will scroll down, so we got another Yuta page uh, where she was very young and uh, she was crying, and Shanks was singing to her. We also see this woman. Uh, childcare meeting. We also see this woman in this panel that's singing that that looks somewhat like Nami, and she's got a baby in her arms. Now a lot of people are theorizing this baby is actually Luffy, and that this might be the first glimpse of Luffy's mom, perhaps. I don't know how true that is, but uh. <coughs> Luffy's mom a hint that things are about to get very important in the future. Don't know, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, if this is Luffy's mom, it would mean that Shanks didn't know her. And that Luffy's known about, you know, he, Shanks has known Luffy since he was a baby. But yeah, moving on. Chapter 1057, Final Curtain, which is officially, 
apparently the final chapter of Wano, the end of Act 3. So, let's go through it. <coughs> we get the cover page. Uh, German 66 called Blooded Voyage Volume 16. Caesar's poison gas attack. So Caesar comes in and uh, fights off Kataguri and Oven to save Germa 66. So he's obviously going to be teaming up with these guys, for sure. I think at this point it's pretty much confirmed and established. And with Big Mom out of the picture, the, you know, the Big Mom pirates are going to be in disarray. So we cut to the... Oh God. We cut to the flower capital, dark clouds gather, and, and we get in this sort of song opening, really. A storm echoes through the sky, consuming Onigashima. A tale is being told in the capital. The roar of the Azura dragon and the howls of countless other beasts join the Konopokopi. At harbour port, the scattered leaves of all four are bleached, are burned in the pattering rain. Okay, it's like a poem being sung. And we see the teacher. We cut to this classroom, to this to this school or festival, whatever it is. People are sitting there listening. This is obviously a whole bunch of people. You got that teacher with the glasses there in the center, and I think you've got Hayori there playing like the uh, the instrument. Uh, the stage is set for a tale of duty and honor. This is the royal. This is the story of the royal retainers and their quest to let Kazuki Oda's name shine once more. Sorry about this. I've been coughing a lot lately for the past week, that so. I have got some allergies, I don't know from what, but uh, yeah, it's annoying. Many a hardship lie in wait, but they stay resolute to meet their fate, the Red Scarabs, as the evening of the Fire Festival starts to unfold. And we cut from that to the present time, forest near Tokage Port Yudo. What? You're not heading out to sea? Yamato? Nope. I'm staying. I'm already spoken to Luffy and the others about it. So Yamato is staying. After all this considerable hype about a character joining the Straw Hats, she ends up staying. I have to say, that has to be the biggest misdirection that Oda has done so far. And it's kind of annoying, really. I was really looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, another female character join the crew officially for once. And, uh, you know, maybe usurp the title of the trio and get this new trio between Zoro, Sanji and Yamato because Luffy at this point is pretty much a god now so like you know this whole trio thing is now out of the window like the trio's done with, with Luffy having reached that level there is no longer any trio it's a duology if you will um but uh yeah we, we see that uh, Yamato and Kinemon are on top of Momonosuke in his dragon form and they're flying towards I believe where they think Luffy is Kinemon, are you really content with this, Yamato? Aren't I welcome here? You are. We are just confused. A moment ago, you said you had made up your mind. Oh, that. Well, Oda started his journey with a tour of Wano, right? I realize there's so much out there that I don't understand, but I'm sure that I'll find my way if I follow in his footsteps, and I'm bound to make it out to sea sooner or later. Unbelievable. You were able to tell them, tell them about all this? So... Yeah, it's kind of annoying, really. It's like, oh, I'm gonna do. She's still, she's still in that older mindset. She's fully embraced that mindset. What was I going on about, about Yamato? Yeah, yeah. I don't really care at this point. Like, uh, kind of annoying. But uh, yeah, moving on. That does it. They must have intentionally stopped me. Why did? Why bid farewell to everyone but us? Your name, your father was a fool of a lord. Identify yourself, I'm Luffy. And he's, you know, Momonosuke's getting flashback to Kaido. He's getting flashbacks to Luffy when he met him. And he's getting angry now. When he was, he's getting all these little flashbacks to when they first met and they were fighting. So what if you're a warrior? I'm going to be king of the pirates one day. So there. Bah. Oh yeah. Well, one day I will be anointed Shogun of Warno, Warno. So take that, you halfwit. Big talk for an eel. You're nothing but an ignorant ape. Uh, what are you, what are you, Momo? Just some figurehead? Are you just going to stand here, stand there, and cry? I want to be Kaido. All right. Then let's team up. That's it's an alliance. And yeah, this was. Uh, I remember this moment. When Luffy was be ranting on uh, Momo as a child, and he was telling him to just freaking like stop crying and like what does he want and then forming the alliance. What a it's crazy to think that was like so many years ago. Like it feels like it was yesterday when we got those chapters and that reveal and like uh, it's just wow, it's just insane. And a Kanjuru portraying them, Luffy. That's the spirit, Momo. You may be a cowardly, jumped up, top knotted brat, but you're right. Find a way to survive. We'll have your back. Don't forget we're pals. 
And then when Kaido had like had Momo was like, ask you one more time, boy, what is your name? Kozuki Momonosuke, the man who will be Shogun or Shogun of Wano. And go, you can fly, right? Stop on Onigashima and his tracks. I will definitely beat Kaido. And that's the that's the end of those flashbacks. And we see Momonosuke just reflecting all of that on his big journey. Because when you think about this saga, this saga as a whole has really been about Momonosuke and his growth from from finding out that he's this prince and from you know meeting these pirates these people who you know pirates who destroyed his family and his home to find these pirates who then teamed up and helped him retake back his home and that and him growing to the p to finally be the shogun of wano like it's been a great character development for him i know a lot of people would what don't really like his character as much seeing as a perfect little kid right but he's got he's gone far i think he's he's become he's gone He's gone really far as a character, I think, and I think Oda has done a good job of overall closing off this entire saga that that started, uh, technically speaking, when you think about it, with Punk Hazard all the way back then. Like, so it, it's crazy to think how far we have come since then. But yeah, uh, Momonosuke flying, huff huff. We may not have always. A lot of Christ, this camera. I swear to God, we may we may not have always gotten along, but we went for a lot together. Is he really that heartless? I was wrong about you, Luffy. You feed. He is mistaken being free with free to be rude. Am I wrong, Kinemon? Not at all. By the way, Momonosuke Sama, is there a reason we aren't flying? Quiet. So he's not flying. He's running on the ground. That's uh. I guess he's he's pissed at this point. It's like I can't I can't concentrate on flying. So I'm gonna be running fast on the ground. Momonosuke Sama, you are the undisputed shogun of Wano and Wano now. Depending on Luffy Donald's words, I may, I may have no choice but but cleave him in apart for this slight. Exactly. This is the way of the samurai. I thought we were pals, Luffy. And Yamato's like, I think you're blowing this out of proportion. He humiliated us. Overlooking this without giving him a few blows and bites is out of the question. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Makes sense, I guess, for the, for them and their culture, really. It's like, dude, where's the respect? So we cut to Tokage Port now, Udo. And we see the three different sh ship shells. And uh, yeah, they're all staying apart now. Law. Remember, the next time we meet, it'll be as enemies. Don't whine to me if we're shooting to kill. And Luffy's like, gotcha. And Chop is like, see you around, Trough. And Law's like, buzz off. And then we're cut into uh, uh, kids like, set sail. No goodbye words, no nothing. Uh, we're seeing Zora, Chopper, Nami, Brooke, and Sanji looking up. And we, we get this call like, hey. And Luffy's like, oh. And there's Momonosuke, all terrifying. Seriously, it looks like Kaido here at this point. He's like, coming in, he's like, you monsters. <laughs> and Yamato's like, hey, we've come to see you off. Momonosuke, Kinemon, Yamato-chan. And yeah, he transforms back into... into uh, Momonosuke transforms into his human form. And Luffy's like, whoa, what's going on? And he gets him. And it's Yamato that actually jumps up along with uh, Momonosuke. And they both grab him. Luffy, like, obviously, uh, Lu Yamato with love. And you know, uh, Momonosuke with anger, and then there's Kinemon coming in, sword raised. Uh, while Momonosuke is holding him down, he's like, "Luffy, you da you dastard, you dastard." Is that what is that? Is it supposed to be bastard or dastard? Is that even a word, dastard? What is the meaning of this outrage? How can you abandon the two comrades you have known the longest without a word? You have angered the Shogun. What do you have to say for yourself? And Luffy's like, "What's the big deal? We're meeting now, aren't we?" Luffy, this is an ed ed edict from the Shogun. Oh, and he's crying. Like, he's not even angry anymore. He's crying. He's like, please don't leave. It'll be so lonely. I want to be with you forever. It can't end like this. Again, keep in mind, this is a little kid in an adult's body. So, yeah. And uh, Luffy's just like, uh, I'm going to my stuff for Christ. This is, this is what it's led up to. And he's crying. I only managed to survive because you were there. And all the others are there. And Frankie giving his usual little crying form. And Chopper shedding a tear. You know, you're the reason I can laugh again. Thank you so much for avenging my father and my mother. You see, I can't even express myself properly now. I'm scared of what happens next. And uh, he's like, please don't go. And even Nami's just like, she's she's overwhelmed by this. And Zoro's like, that's quite the pitiful side. And it's like, Nami's like, can't even break. He's still a little kid on the inside. And she's right, he is. He is a little kid. And we have to remember that. And, and, uh, and Luffy calling out to Usopp is like, Usopp, yeah, it's ready. And, and he's got a present for him. They throw it to him. And... Um, what is it? What is that? It's like a, it's like a big black cloth or something. Uh, what is that? We've been waiting here all, all this time because I wanted to give you this. Uh, even if you're a bit bigger now, I know what you're like on the inside. You can't play the tough shogun with me, Momo. And it's like you're sm you're a small, weak dummy. But I think of you like a little brother. That's so sweet for Luffy even to say that. It's like yeah. And we get the reveal of this big cloth is, and it's a giant straw hat flag. This is it's a flag. 
when a movie's like when times are tough, look at it and remember your seafaring adventures. Hang it up somewhere in Wano. If any major bad news comes knocking, just point them to it. Oh, it'll let them. It'll let them know that screwing with our friends is the same as screwing with us. So Luffy. Like, if you guys remember, Luffy, uh, when, when he was talking to Big Mom, he did say that he was going to protect Fishman Island, okay? He, he was like, this is my territory now, bitch. Like, uh, but, w they, so in a way, that was like the first territory in a way that Luffy was like, yo, this is my territory now. And now that he's technically officially an emperor, it makes it even more true now more than ever. But this... This is now officially 100% Luffy's territory, basically, because he's officially giving that flag to them. It's like, yo, yeah, here you go. And does that mean I, I'm one of you now? It's like, yeah, obviously it means you're part of the Enkinemon, Yamato, Momo. If any of you ever want to be pirates, I'll come for you right away. It's like, all right. And it's like, just remember, I won't have any weaklings on board. And Momo's like, you know, he's realizing it's like, okay, right. No more crime. And take care of them, Yamato, as Luffy's saying now, yeah, let's go. And uh, obviously, Momo, bow on his head, keep it together, show good. Good luck, Momonosuke. And yeah, like, that's the goodbye. Like, it's crazy. Like, after all this, this is where the journey climax is with Luffy giving them a flag. And we're like, yo, this is your flag, which means this is now my territory. It's under my protection. We are brothers. That's what it is. We're, we're, we're more. We're more than friends. We're family. And it's like, yo, that's that's beautiful, man. Like, I wanna, I wanna shed a tear, man. Like, it, it, it's oh man. Like, I, 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 I started reading One Piece, man, towards the end of Address Rosa. So I was there to see all of this like happening, like the alliance and that, and then to finally come here after all these years. I think like after seven or six, six, six or seven years, it, it, it's freaking. I think it's more than that. I think it's like seven, eight years now. I think it's insane. It's freaking insane. I think this was about 20, 20, 2014 when this happened. Like, oh my god, it's been so long since then. Like, it's 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 just I can't believe it. I can't fathom it. Like, it, 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 like we're in this moment now. But yeah, uh, continuing on. Like, Kinemon, yes. Mark my words. Someday I will surpass Kozoki Oda. Uh, and he's like, I will be by your side when you do. And Yamato's like, you're talking about me. He's like, no. And uh, yeah, that's a bit. That's getting a bit annoying now. It's like, no, we're not talking about you. We're talking about my dad, older, not you, older. Shut up, Yamato. <laughs> and uh, Nami is like, Nami's looking out. Like they all got the uh, Nami's got a new outfit as well. Like, all right, let's get uh, let's set course for uh, Hakume. The main port is there. I was told there's a lift that can lower ships down. So yeah, they're gonna go to a lift because if you guys remember, they're on like this uh, big, big. They had to go up a waterfall essentially. And Brooke's like, pew, I thought since we scaled a waterfall to get here, we'd have to fall uh, down and to leave. And uh, uh, Chubb was like, me too, thank goodness. And Zoro is just giving this sort of look to Luffy as, as he's looking out. And Kid's there. So now all three ships are sailing together. And Kid's there. He's like, ah, yeah, that makes sense. You guys wouldn't use the main port. It's the same and sound way after all. <laughs> so, yeah, perfect for you wusses. So, yeah, Kid is... Yeah, Kid is pissing off Luffy and Law now, safe and sound, and both Kid and Luffy snap. Lu Kid, yeah, no, sorry, Law and Luffy snap. So yeah, the competition, the ri the rivalry, still strong even towards the end of this arc. Is like, no, Luffy, being safe is good. Don't let him get to you. Hang on, Captain. What's with that face? We all think the main port is better. Jubei, give me the helm. Luffy, don't. Oh God, Luffy is taking the helm. I imagine Law is taking the helm, and yeah, they all decide to jump off the waterfall. All three of them. Stop it. Take the and we're, we're, no, we're all gonna die. Like, and all three of them take this. So yeah, it's a beautiful way to end it. I think them and yeah, yeah. You know, this is insane. Like, they're, they're crazy. They're insane. But uh, Luffy is officially. To be fair, Kid and Law defeated an emperor as well. They should be emperors, they should be considered emperors as well, technically speaking. So really, to say that they're weaklings is an understatement. No, these the two of them work together to defeat Big Mom. And yeah, like, they're not weaklings, so yeah, they're on the same, le for the most part, they are on the same level, for the most part. But yeah, uh, the might of the outlaws recruited by Lord Momonosuke and Kinemon made them akin to real life wisdom kings. Wisdom kings, so what, they're, so, they're, they're sort of like, so what, Kid, Luffy and Law are, are, are like the representation of the three wise men basically, right? Uh, the power descended like a wraithful tsunami of liberating all in its path. Okay. 
and they're going down we're seeing their expressions even Kaido the Dragon King and the Yonkai possessed uh, giant Ore failed to withstand their assault the heavens themselves were torn as painful shrieks reverberated through the air and were kind to the teacher and he's still he's still t he's basically talking about this tale now during that chaos Princess Hayori was accosted by Orochi, the snake that seemingly perished in the flames. In a desperate la uh, last-ditch attempt for his uh, spiteful vengeance, his gambit was thwarted by a single slash. And who owns the blade that separated Orochi from his final cursed head? Why, none other than Kenzuki Oda's second disciple, Denjiro. With his last one detached and burning, the twisted Kurozomi was at long last brought to his knees. Right. And then a flash of lightning marked the fall of Onigashima and with it the fall of the Dragon King Kaido. The sun had finally pierced the dark clouds that were suffocating one over twenty long years. The skies were cleared. Sounds from the ignorant masters celebrating the fire festival in the capital creeped into their ears. Then, suddenly, defying all reason, all uh, the burning remains of Orochi spoke. The Korozomi family's grudge shall continue to curse this rotten land, generation of the generation for all eternity. But Princess Hayori refused to flinch or shudder. She held a gaze. The country's twenty years worth of torturous memories fueled her heart. So I guess we get this reveal that Orochi, before he died, made one final statement, I guess. Or maybe this is just for the uh, sake of, uh, of this storytelling effect, if you will. Uh, you know, media propaganda, uh, and uh, Dondro, we get this little flashback of Dondro keeping uh, Hayori away, he's like, stand back, it's too dangerous, Hayori-sama cried the samurai Dondro, but she brushed aside his hand. Our beloved princess would not wield a single step. Staring into Orochi's devilish face, she delivered a dampening and tuper. Right, seriously, this is going longer than I, than I would have liked to. Um, so yeah, we get Hayori, and she's pointing a fan at the burning Orochi's head, her fan held aloft the Kazuki crest proudly dan dancing on its edge. No longer having to bite her tongue like she did for the last 20 years, she cried out, Father, Mother, Brother, and our homeland, hear this. Woot, this is the moment I've been waiting for. All the cheer uh, crowd is screaming. We all know. We all know their name means charcoal. So all together now, we all need the names mean charcoal. I think the Korozomi were born to burn. She's lashing out, she's saying that, and everyone's cheering. The Korozomi were, met, were born to burn, and now the slides head ahead. The little to kid the... playing with Hayori there, where feuds and weapons can finally rest. A shocking truth is revealed at the port where the reserved Crescent Moons met. The denouncement of this violent saga is a joyous reunion. The blood spilt in order to revive this clan will never be forgotten. A record of their sacrifices will always be carried by the wind. That concludes today's tale, and we get uh, on our nation's renowned samurai and we get this final kit panel spread of the samurai we see Momonosuke in the center we see Kinemon with Otama, Kawatsu, Okiki, Dog Duke, Yamato between Dog Duke and Cat Viper Donjuru there, a young Shinobu and Raizo still looks the same unfortunately so that's a great panel and then we're cutting to Momonosuke, Kinemon and Yamato racing to the flower capital and how they miraculously return to us. With that, I think a world earned break is in order. Momonosuke-sama, Shogun-sama, now well, shall we hang? Now where shall we hang this flag till we meet again? Farewell. And we see the curtains closing, we see the blossoms, the sakura blossoms, and it's closing and that's it, the final curtain. Inherited wills will, ne will, will, uh, inherited will never fades. But we don't get a we don't get an end of one or act three, so what's what's going on there? I guess this is the end. I guess this is technically officially the end, unless we're getting some sort of epilogue and then that's the end. But uh, no, that's it. This was a pretty long chapter. A lot a lot happened here. A lot of, a lot a lot of it was pretty much a big goodbye chapter essentially. I think this was probably one of the longer chapters actually in terms of pages. I imagine. But yeah, this is the end of the chapter, and my thoughts on it, it was good. It's a nice way to wrap and end things. Obviously, there are probably a few loose ends that people will not be happy about, but as we're going into the final saga, I imagine we're going to start getting a lot of answers going forward. But yeah, this ending, I'm seeing a lot of mixed opinions, because a lot of people are like, Hayori is venting the flames of hatred by saying, you know, all the, you know, the Kurozumi were born to burn. Uh, 
on one hand, I'm assuming, you know, Ali, I'm assuming she's referring to Orochi specifically, but you also have to keep in mind that if this is actually true, if this is what technically happened after uh, Orochi's head was cut off and he did say those final words before he perished, this dude is straight up saying that it doesn't matter who, who you know, who it is. If you're a, a Korozumi, you know, you're going to be wanting revenge. And you guys have to keep in mind, this whole thing started because, you know, the Korozomi were traitors, but not all of them were traitors, and yet their clan was hunted down by the people, not the Kozokis personally, and were killed. I know, I know Orochi suffered for that, he saw his family killed for that, and he wanted revenge, along with some of the other members of the Korozomi family. But, uh, you know, instead of, instead of being good and, and showing that, no, they're not evil, that they can be good, he just amplified all that hate you know he amplified everything that people already thought about them and made it true basically um so i don't, I don't know how to feel i mean uh, to be honest i don't really care i'm one of those people who doesn't care i feel like i feel like if you're a kurozomi regardless you're gonna be a piece of shit you're gonna be harboring those feelings of resentment regardless even if you don't do anything about it but orochi did do something about it you know that's the biggest difference um uh, and, you know, yeah, you know, Harari is sitting there like, you know, the Kurozomi were born to burn. Like, yeah, like, kill all the Kurozomis at this point. It's like, Orochi has not done a good job of showcasing that there's any good Kurozomis, le Kurozomis left. You know, a lot of people were theorizing that Otama might be a Kurozomi, but we never got that revelation. So, you know, it, that sort of goes out the window of, of suggesting that, oh, she she's one of the good ones. And therefore, you know, th this is a new future, like where she can uh, take the clan into a good light. But that never happened. And uh, overall, from what we've seen, overall of this family line, they were evil for the most part. They were traitors. And even if some of them weren't, uh, it could be more of a case of that they were traitors, but they never took action, but they still harbor those feelings. Personally, I don't care. I'm I'm with Wano after suffering for 20 years. I don't really care. Kill them all, personally. I mean, I don't technically condone genocide. I don't. But uh, this hits too close to home. And I get this hate. I really do. And... I understand it. I see exactly where they're coming from. Yeah, I don't really care. Like, screw the Kurozomis. I know it's bad for me to say, but uh, I'm talking from experience here, so I get what they're going for, and it's like, sure, whatever, cool. Like, and to be fair, this is a play. It's all about the hype and playing up to the hype. So who knows? Maybe something will change. Maybe there will be a big twist where it's revealed, oh, Atama is a Kurozomi, uh, and it's like, okay, but... Uh, you have to keep in mind, Hayari did suffer, these people did suffer for 20 years. They have no forgiveness in their hearts. Whatever forgiveness that could have been went out the window when Orochi became Shogun and did all of this damage and caused all of this damage. So there will never be any forgiveness. It's just impossible. Like, it's strange to go from something like Fishman Island where there was this hatred and, uh, and, and, and it was like a case of, you know, stopping that hatred and seeing the consequences of how of how Queen Otami for it, uh, Otomo was it, Otami, uh, you know, Poseidon's, uh, uh, Shinoroshi's mother basically, how she helped that celestial dragon and now he ended up helping uh, the door in return. And here we see it's like, no, this is not the case. Like if there's a, you know what I mean? I get it. I, I get the negativity, ne negativity surrounding it. It is bad. It, it is bad, but... So yeah, as I was saying, guys, I get the hate. I do, I understand it. But speaking from real life experience, this is something that happens in real life and it's never going to go away. Like, uh, it isn't. There's a lot of people who, considering if, if they've gone through similar situations in real life and have suffered under a certain tyranny, you know, as I said already, yeah. People aren't willing to forgive, and and they're not gonna forget. So, I I get I get the contrast of I think of what Oda's trying to do. You know, there's those that will forgive, and there are those that simply won't, considering what's happening because of this one freaking person that ruined it for everyone. So it's sad, it's tragic, and I think you have to sort of see it in that kind of light as viewed. This is on one hand, while they are screaming happiness, there is a tragedy to this as well. Uh, whether it's subtle or whether this was all as intention, I don't know. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, yeah, one was happy, but unfortunately, sadly, there is a tragedy behind this, behind the curtain that only we as readers can see. And it is horrifying, it is shocking, 
but it's understandable. That's the thing you have to keep in mind. This is understandable. And yeah, it's sad, but overall, this arc is now over. Okay, it's over. Hopefully, this means we can, you know, end with all of this depressing stuff that we've gone through for the last few years. And we can get back to maybe some good happy arcs before we go into the final, final sagas. You know, the big thing right now is is what's going to happen next. You know, are we are we getting are we getting straight into the next arc, or is there going to be like a a, a a setup now, like and seeing what's happened to the rest of the world? I think that's going to be the case. I think, you know, that's my that's my uh, theory right now that we're going to see what's going on. Uh, throughout the rest of the world before we cut back to you know present time if you will but yeah overall overall it's crazy uh, i think someone here's written uh, i'm reading a comment here start chapter 909 released july 2nd 2018 that's when one all started and uh one all ends officially with chapter 1057 released august 21 2022 148 chapters four years and one month that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy to think about, but wow. Four years. Four years and one month. That's insane. Anyway, guys, that's my review. I hope you liked it. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care.